Hey everybody, Zyle here. Welcome back to another Guides Not Included. This guide is about the Somnium Synthesizer. Uh, it is a unique building that you can discover in your playthroughs, uh, whether you're playing the base game or spaced out DLC, uh, it will exist somewhere. Typically I find it's very often on the starting asteroid because that starting asteroid is so big in the base game, uh, but in the spaced out DLC it's almost always going to be on a different asteroid, so you'll have to actually go to a secondary asteroid to discover it. So let's just have a quick introduction as to what this thing is. It, it is this artifact type item that you will find, and it's composed of a couple things. Uh, the first thing is it will always be in this type of layout of a room, and it'll have its main building, which if you uh, examine it closely, you will see has a input for gas. And of course, oxygen is what you want to be feeding into that. As well, it will have a pajama cubby. And with the pajama cubby, you can dispense an item. And when you click dispense item, a dupe will have to come over and work at it for a little bit. And then pajamas will fall on the floor. And those pajamas can be told, you can tell any dupe to then go and equip them. So that's the two main components of the building. It also has these LED lights, which are, it's a unique object in the game, which I do not believe we can ever build. But they are a strange type of light because they give off no um, heat at all. If we look at the light overlay, give off some light so there there is some i don't know some possibilities with these things to be used for other purposes they certainly the range is quite far and consider them versus um you know a normal light gives us the same but has heat production whereas an led light has no heat production right so theoretically if you wanted to you could demolish this building take these two buildings out and then plant plants here and use this light for a uh, for a light source that uh, gives off no heat and requires no power just a little side note so what this building does um, and we'll quick click on one of my dupes here and we'll find the buff related it's called maximum aptitude and colony wide so when this thing is active colony wide every single dupe will get the following buff they will get a stress reducer of minus 25 percent per cycle and increased their athletics of five, increased their strength of five, and increased their science of five. And keep in mind that even if it's not a science dupe, all attributes will go up faster based on the science um, score they have. So having five science and a dupe who has no science at all instead of zero actually means he's going to learn his attributes slightly faster. So it does provide a bit of a bonus in that sense. It gives uh, five points to piloting, which is really nice because piloting will raise fairly slowly. And a lot of dupes don't pilot very much, but if they do ever take the helm uh, for any reason, get, having five extra piloting skill is pretty useful. Um, and as we know from piloting, if I go and look at one of my pilot dupes, so RTD2 pilots, he, he, he's my mining pilot. So he constantly has been, for thousands of cycles, been, been rocket piloting. Um, so if we check out on him for his... Uh, uh, he's got 27 piloting so he's maxed his pilot at 20 but you can see from the skill selection i've taken he has rocket piloting an additional plus two and then maximum aptitudes give him five more so at 27 piloting he's getting a plus 68 percent rocket speed which is fairly significant um uh, you know yes it would be a little bit less so if he didn't have maximum aptitude but it is a nice little bonus skill uh to, to have uh somnian synthesizer and then lastly they, they will get from maximum aptitude uh, machinery skill plus five. So all these things are quite useful, but this is colony wide. So based on how many dupes, now my colony right now had 28 dupes. Every single one of them is getting this buff. Let's not count my dreaming dupes though, because you know, that's six of them who do nothing. But it's a fairly powerful buff that if you can get it set up and running consistently. So now we know what it does. Here's how it begins. You discover the thing and initially, what you need to do is get dupes wearing pajamas and when they wear pajamas you're going to see that they are going to get a negative aptitude uh, from wearing those pajamas so if we go and look at his athletics you can see that because he has a nodding off debuff of minus eight athletics that's because he's wearing pajamas so they actually work quite against you and slow your dupes down greatly. So you don't want all your normal dupes in the base um, wearing pajamas and it's for their normal sleep cycle to start generating the dream journals. And that's what happens. So you wear pajamas, 
And when they sleep, they generate dream journals. And you can see he has a progress bar. That's him writing his dream journal, okay? And when this completes, he'll produce one dream journal. To get the quest done that's related to this and to begin the activation cycle, you have to supply this with 25 dream journals. So it will, it will hum and act like it's doing something before you complete the quest. But until you feed it 25 dream journals, it will not unlock. So it'll hum, but it will do nothing. Not only do you have to give it 25 dream journals, once you give it the 25 dream journals, it will start to do its process and it will grant, it will start working its way, like basically eating up those dream journals until they're gone. But it also requires oxygen. It requires 500 grams a second. So that's equivalent to five dupes breathing. It needs 500 grams a second in order to operate. So if we look at it with it on pause, you can see it is eating up a lot of oxygen. And if it doesn't get this oxygen supply, it will not do its process. It will stop activating it will, it will, and it will not give the buff. So right now this one's active. It's being supplied journals. You can see there's, it's slowly absorbing them away. Okay, and the most it can ever hold is 25 at one time. And then there's the oxygen. And most it can hold oxygen is 4,500 grams. So you can fill it up so there's no like stops and spurts if you happen to have a missing packet, right? Um, so the idea is, is you always want this to have oxygen. You always want it to have dream journals to be working away. And if you do, then your whole colony will get that buff. And so the way that when you do this, you have to approach it the, where the easiest method to do is to dedicate dupes to doing this rather than trying to get your whole colony involved in it. Instead, what I've done, and this setup is very simple. I have six dupes. Now, the reasoning behind this, some of the math. So it takes a dupe 300 seconds, which is about 12 blocks, okay, half a cycle or whatever, of sleeping in pajamas to generate a single dream journal. Uh, the machine will eat about every 60 seconds, it will eat one dream journal. So you need to be giving it at least one dream journal every 60 seconds, okay? Um, so roughly then it, it requires like 10 dream journals per cycle if you want to keep the buff up forever. That works out to be six dupes sleeping pretty much full time, okay? And then if you have that going, they will provide what it needs full time. So that's what I have. I have six dupes and we go look at their schedule and we can see that these dupes, okay, and they're all number two, number six, and so on. They're all set to sleeping, except for two blocks of downtime. Now, you don't have to worry about this. You can have two, three, four, uh, you know, you, you, just, you could even have this down to one. I wouldn't recommend going past three, because right now, with the speed, the time it takes for them to wake up, do what they need to do for bathroom, eat food, and then go back to bed, it's about 2.3 cycles. So that's why I said it's two. So as soon as they are finished, what they must do, when they, they have to go to the bathroom, they have to go to the bathroom. If they have to eat food, they're gonna eat food, right? But that's all they need to do. So as soon as they are done that, then they're gonna immediately go back to bed. So we're maximizing out their sleep time. What happens is they wake up at different times. And the reason I do that is so I can have one bathroom dedicated for them. And there's only ever gonna be one using it. You can notice everything I can do possible to, in, to speed up their journey. So basically they get up, there's tile, there's the metal tile so they can get the move speed. They run down, they use the bathroom. I've got a duplicate motion sensor hooked to a light so they'll use the bathroom to sink faster. And they go and eat. I'm delivering their food into the mess hall so that they don't go up and grab it from the kitchen. They're just making the shortest pathways possible for what they're gonna do. So you can see here, this one has just woken up. She's now eating. And I also have a motion sensor here and a light so that when she's sitting here eating, it speeds up her, the time it takes her to eat. And she goes to the bathroom. Again, light, motion sensor, speed up the time that she uses. And she's already, it's time for sleep, okay? And we go look at her schedule, number two. You see, it was about the midway, about maybe 2.5 way through where she was like, oh, um, I'm done now, and she ran back. So this setup with six dupes is fast enough to always supply this thing. And if you ever watch this, it's always sitting at the cap, okay? The other thing too is dream journals can be automated. You can set this, it's under story traits, dream journal. 
and they will ship it. And so the shipping, as you can see, goes through and here. Now you can see we are generating more than it can consume, which is what you want. You want to be, you want to be positive on that. So you're never going to run out for any reason. So it, the dream journals are basically they're backed up, but you also see there's none laying around the ground. So it is just, it's very, very slow. Like I'm just slightly ahead of the curve and it kind of moderates because every now and then they might have a bit of a delay uh, to their process. So uh, I've been running this now for 350 cycles and it's been up 100% the entire time, which means my whole colony has been getting the buff. What you need to do though, and the way I did it, is you have to think, if I'm gonna have this, and this will, if you're playing spaced out, this is gonna be on a different asteroid. If I'm gonna have this up running all the time, I'm going to need to build a secondary base for it. This is not my main base. This is a secondary base that I built. I basically built the entire thing before I started to activate with these guys. So step one was to lay out all the groundwork, build what I knew I would need in order to keep this up and running. And of course, you're gonna need some, some things. You're gonna need oxygen, for whatever amount of dupes you have, at least six. So that's gonna be 600 grams a second. You're gonna need 500 grams a second of oxygen for this. So you're gonna need an oxygen system and you're gonna need to regulate it because you don't necessarily wanna be overproducing the oxygen. That's one thing you need. You're gonna need some kind of bathroom system for them, uh, but you can do uh, a system that just basically, you know, you um, take the dirty water and you, you uh, uh, purify it and turn it back into clean water and just cycle it through. So that would be one, a closed loop system could be made for this washroom. Uh, you're gonna need to supply them with food. My solution was to have two dupes extra. So base this on eight dupes, right? Because I knew I would, uh, the math would work out where um, it's not like I could be so tight to the oxygen that uh, I would want to be at six. If I have six, I have eight plus this thing. It, the math works out where you can have more dupes. It's not a big deal for oxygen. Um, dupes don't they don't make extra power usage really, right? So uh, power isn't a problem either. So I have two dupes. One's a farmer, one's a cook. And I chose to go with Bristle Blossoms because it's simple. And as long as you can supply water to the, all the plants, then it's infinite. It's not like you need to have a dirt system for fertilizer, you don't need a fertilizer system. So all other food methods, well, they can work. Um, this one for my setup was simplest. Because I'm playing on the max difficulty, my dupes are ravenous, so they eat twice as much. So this is why I have to have so many plants for eight dupes, right? If you're playing on normal, you would need half this number and you would use half the water for them. You also, though, don't have to do what I'm doing where I have a farmer who just exclusively farms all day and does nothing else, and a cook who exclusively cooks all day and does nothing else. Um, you don't, you don't have to do that. What you could do, especially in the normal setting is you could come here and you could pip plant all of these bristle blossoms. If you pip plant them, uh, and again, you'll have to go watch another guide about pip planting. That's not what the purpose of this guide is. Uh, but if you pip plant, uh, what you need for food, then you won't have to supply this with water and that will reduce your water requirements greatly because the only thing you're going to have to now supply for water is if you're using electrolyzers to provide your oxygen uh, and i would think that's what you would want to do um, all other systems related to oxygen require some kind of resource uh, there is no real way and i think that electrolyzer spa uh, you know uh, self-powering oxygen machines are best because you don't have to worry about power and so on so an electrolyzer setup is probably best for supplying the oxygen for this many dupes plus this machine so so you have to solve your oxygen problem. You have to solve your food problem based on what your your base gives you, like what what uh, resource, infinite resources you would have on the base. Uh, it really could vary depending on the setup, but you need to have a source of food. And again, you don't have to have good food. You, know, you could be feeding them meal lice. They, ha they have no morale requirements because they have very, very few skills. What I did for skills is I just gave them what they would need to get the athletics bonuses. So their moral requirement is seven. Anybody can achieve that. So simple. I haven't even given them very much other than great halls and, and bedrooms and so on and, and washrooms and their morale is already off the charts compared to um, what they require. So oxygen, you have solution to oxygen for them. You need a solution to food. If you went with pip planting, you wouldn't need a farmer as well and you wouldn't need a cook. You could do meal lice, for example. You could do bristle blossoms and then you could use automation to scoop it all up as it falls at the vine and deliver it into their mess hall. So this system could have been done with just six dupes. We could have pip planted all these bristle blossoms that we needed and then we could have run automation. Remember, you'll need four times 
the requirement for bristle blossoms if you are not far, if you pip plant them, because normally it's six cycles for them to harvest and it's 24 if they're going wild. So whatever calculation that you're doing, realize that if you don't supply them with water and farm them, you'll need four times the amount, but it's doable, right? For six dupes, even with my setup, I could have just planted, pip planted as many as possible, ran automation and delivered all of it just straight in here and told them to eat the, the raw um, bristle blossom food instead of having the farmer and the uh, cook here. But the one of the reasons that I wanted to have these guys here is because A, it would make the uh, footprint of everything smaller, but also because it doesn't add a lot of requirement to the resources I need. Having two more dupes to feed is not that great of a deal when you consider that we're actually increasing the amount of food by cooking it and by farming it, the, the footprint is much less. Um, they don't use water other than the oxygen they breathe, but that's minuscule for two more dupes for the oxygen. So really having two extra dupes is not a big deal. One of the main reasons I like having them is because I'm on a remote asteroid. I'm not on my main base. And if anything goes wrong with the whole setup and my other dupes can't get here uh, in their rockets to fix things, then at least I've got some dupes that I'm okay with cracking open the base and letting them out to go maybe tinker or something, fix something. So it's just a couple guys around who actually can run off and do stuff without me having to use the dupes who are sleeping and have no skills at all. The process for me setting this up was um, once I got the whole foundation of the base laid out, once I figured out what my oxygen solution would be and what my um, food solution would be, then I had to also come up with a power solution and it had to be something that would be continuous. So I was very lucky on this map where I have a hydrogen vent and two natural gas vents. So my power problem was more or less solved, but it still had to be all wired in and set up, right? So you have to solve those three things. You need power, you need oxygen, you need food. Okay. In order to, if you don't need water, well, the only thing where water would be is if it's based into the electrolyzer, which is oxygen, or if it's in the food, right? So water is, is part of the food component, maybe, and water is part of your oxygen component, maybe. But it's not like the dupes drink water, and the bathrooms don't need water because you, you can use a, a recycling system that just keeps using the same water over and over. So once you solve your, your power issue to keep the base powered for whatever component you're going to need, your food and your oxygen, then you can start to design your layout. So you design your entire layout, you get your dupes to come and your regular dupes to come and build everything. And then once it's pretty much built and you've got the food online, you start just taking dupes and you just make sure they don't have any bad traits like bottomless stomach or the one that makes them breathe more oxygen or uh, narcolepsy or the one where they have to have lights on because you just don't want to have to worry about separate bedrooms and building a light for one dupe. So snores loudly is obviously a tr bad trait that you don't take. But basically what you do is you start taking dupes in. I always look for ones that have science or quick learner. If they have science or quick learner, that's going to help them to get their athletics up faster. As soon as they arrive, they don't start wearing pajamas and dreaming. What they do is they start working out in the gym. So I, ha I would have a door and I set it up so that only they were allowed in here. And these things, all they are is hooked up um, to a light bulb. By having uh, one of these hooked up to a light bulb, then a dupe who is allowed to use it will, if it has nothing else to do, it will want to use this. And of course I set you know their priorities. So the only thing they would ever want to do is to operate. Everything else was turned off. And then they were the only ones to access here and all other doors were locked to them except for their basic needs. So they just had nothing to do and their choice was idle or go work out. And that's it. Of course they would go work out. So they'd all be sitting here spinning on their cycles. And I didn't know how far I wanted to take them. But what I found out was taking them to Athlex 15 was as a base was fairly easy. So you can see on their skills, this one has athletics 15. Okay. So because of the minus eight, they're going to get, and because again, we want them to do their process where they get up, go to the bathroom, eat food as quickly as possible. Uh, get an athletics 15. You could probably do it lower, but I just figured, okay, base level 15 plus the buff of maximum aptitude is 20. Then they can pick up two from their skills. That's 24 minus eight. You got athletic 16, 160% run speed. Now I could, I could probably have gone with uh, one lower, maybe athletic space level 15, 14. Um, and they'd have 150% run speed. So they get 150% from their athletics and then the top metal tiles give another 50%. So they're, they're basically whipping around at about 200 percent run speed 
and it's, it seems like that's fast and do. So once we had done uh, working their athletics up, then we changed their schedules over to where they were, like I had showed, where they're um, two blocks for, for them doing stuff and everything else is blocked off. And then we staggered all their schedules so they'd always be using the bathroom at separate times, which means we can just have one bathroom only for them. Uh, and then they will just use that one. And you can put it nice and close. So the idea is, again, their bedrooms, their bathroom, their mess hall as close as possible. That's how the Somnium synthesizer works. Um, and that's how you can go about setting it up where it can just run infinitely. Again, little details like the fact that um, I, I'll, I'll get into some of the finer points now. So, for example, I completely enclosed off the entire base that they live in with insulated tile. Okay, so it's 100% blocked off so that we are trying to maintain the temperature inside to something that's going to be comfortable and it won't overheat, right? Especially for our plants, but we have a, a cooling loop running through here as well. But you can see it's very hot outside, but all inside self-contained, as well as to keep the oxygen more or less contained, don't let any contaminants in. We have to build a a uh, way to get rid of their carbon dioxide. So we have a little simple venting system. They take the carbon dioxide out of the core base. We have a skill scrubber because initially we want to put into their skills when we're training them up again, because the science skill will affect how fast they learn athletics. So initially you take all these skills, you get two science here, two science here, two science here. And then if you take this one, two science here, so it's two, four, six, eight. So you get them up to eight science while they're first when they first come in they're leveling up and that allows their athletics to grow faster but then you skill scrub them to take those away and give them their athletics so they can get their athletics once so when you're ready to make them become dreamers you would skill scrub them and then give them their skills for athletics as well as you're going to need to make sure if you're doing a cooking system like i am that you're dealing with polluted dirt right um, and you can see here i still have to put some more sweepers in to get the polluted dirt out of their mess hall. This stoop obviously had eaten most of his, dropped down a, a one and we've made some polluted dirt, right? So really I should have like, it's covered over here, but it's not covered on this side, it's something I'll have to put in. But basically what we have in here is we have a sweeper and we have um, a loader and we're looking for polluted dirt and rot pile. And then we need to get rid of that. And the same up in the kitchen, we wanna make sure that we're looking for polluted dirt and rot pile, okay? So if, it, if ever we have over here, some polluted dirt or rot pile, it's gonna get scooped up, loaded out. These eject out into this where we have poke shells. Poke shells will eat rotten food and polluted dirt. And then they, when they do that, they create sand. So not only are we taking the polluted dirt out of the system and giving it to them to eat to get rid of it, but any sand that gets generated, we are picking it up and inserting it back in. And that's just in case our dupes are going to ever need to load up the deodorizers again in case there's a little bit of uh, polluted oxygen around. But the main thing is, it's because we're using a recycling system and we need to keep the filtration on this to keep cleaning the bathroom water and this requires sand. Okay, so the odd bits of polluted dirt you generate and bad food you generate will go to the poke shells. They will eat it. They will create the sand that you're going to need in order to uh, keep your water sieve going. And that is basically the setup of what you would need to do uh, in order to maximize out your Somnian synthesizer. Again, it's all about six dupes dreaming full time. Supply the oxygen, supply the journals. However you, you want to devise your base, this is just how I did it. There would be many different configurations you could do. It's just the basic principle. If you want this, it's actually quite easy to achieve if you understand what is required, what it does, how it works, and also why you would want it. Since I can build this using my skilled up dupes and just wire it in, get her set up, it's not much different than setting up a lot of other uh, complicated systems that we use in this game. And once you got it all figured out and wired in, it's pretty much set it and forget it. Last thing I'll say is as well, if you are going to seal them in, it's very good to have a way that your other dupes could send in materials if they ever need it. So that's what this is for. If I ever need to get something into the base, rather than cracking it open, I just simply go and tell them to put it into this loader and then uh, it'll dump in here and then this thing will sweep and load it here and it will dump in here and so that's the somnian synthesizer uh 
everything that I really have learned about it and everything that uh, it provides and how I go about uh, setting up a system that will allow to keep it running 24 seven and all your dupes can get that glorious buff. If you have any questions or comments about this, any suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. Um, if there's something you want further explained, I'll be, I, I always read the comments and I'll be happy to reply to it. Uh, other than that, if you found this guide useful or interesting, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the like button, consider subscribing. I try to do guides and content that hasn't been done before. I, I don't know of that many uh, Somnian synthesizer guides. Maybe there's some other ones out there, but I figured I'd make one now that I had fully uh, designed this whole system and figured out everything there is to know about this machine and uh, place a guide up. So consider subscribing, hit the like button, feel free to leave a comment. With that being said, have a great day.